This episode of Juice Crew Radio is brought to you by TriBest, making healthy living easy, and our upcoming cleanse, Juicing Survivor, at JuiceGuruRewind.com. Well, welcome. Welcome to Juice Guru Radio. Discover what the magic and power of juicing can do for you. And now, your host, best-selling author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Juice Fasting, Steve Prusak. Well, hello. Welcome to the show. I'm Steve Prusak. Today, we've got Michelle Fondin. She's the author of the new book, Chakra Healing for Vibrant Energy and The Wheel of Healing with Ayurveda, owner of the Ayurvedic Path Yoga and Wellness Studio, where she practices as an Ayurvedic lifestyle. We're going to hear more about that and more on the show. So get some tea, some water, some juice. We'll be back right after this with Michelle Fondin. Here's another Juice Guru approved product. Hey there, Juice Guru tribe. If you're anything like us, you want to eat as much raw enzyme rich food as possible. We choose to use the Sedona Express Dehydrator to create delicious raw food crackers, chips, gourmet nuts, and cookies. We can't think of a better way to start dehydrating and enjoying enzyme rich foods. Order your own Sedona Express at the Juice Guru Tribe discount price by visiting our website at juiceguru.com. The Sedona Express makes healthy living easy. Get one today. Juice Guru Radio. And welcome back to the show. We've got Michelle Fondin here. I said her book, Chakra Healing for Vibrant Energy. And she actually has worked with Deepak Chopra and teaching yoga and meditation. She's got her uh, Vedic Master Certificate from the Chopra uh, Center. Her website, michellefondinauthor.com. But don't worry, we'll have a link to that up at juicecrewradio.com. Let's welcome to the show right now, Michelle Fondin. Thank you so much, Steve. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, Michelle, I'm really into this. Yeah, you know, it's awesome. funny. I'm into yoga and meditation, but but chakras and things. I'm kind of like your target audience. That like, what, what is it true? Do we really have these meridians? <laughs> what are those meridians? What do the colors mean? Let's let's break it down for the, for us simpletons. And sure, what, 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 what is what is chakra? If we can start with that. So the word chakra, it literally it's a Sanskrit word, and it literally means a wheel or a disc. And we have chakras all over the body, which you said are meridians or energy centers. And there are seven main chakras from the base of the spine up through to the crown of the head. And they're literally like spinning vortices of energy within us that correspond to major nerve endings, major organs, and different anatomical regions in the body, as well as certain emotions, developmental stages, and personality traits. <laughs> but um, they're a lot of fun to work with, especially when it comes to healing. So um, yeah, so the, that's what we're going to focus on are the seven main chakras. Well, you've devoted your life to this. And I'm just wondering how you got involved in this, how it became a passion and really what you've devoted, devoted your life to. How, what's the journey? How did how'd you get here? Yeah. So when I was 28 years old, well, I had been practicing yoga for since I was 18. And I didn't know anything about the chakras, but when I was 28 years old, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And just mm. like any cancer diagnosis, of course, it's shocking and, you know, you're blindsided, but I was 28 and I had two small kids and I was like, what is going on? But I knew instinctively that there must be a reason why I got the cancer. And I was really digging deep into what are the behaviors, the lifestyle patterns that could have maybe contributed to this and I stumbled upon a paragraph in a book on alternative health and healing that talked about the chakras. And when I read about the fifth chakra, the area of the throat, which is where the thyroid is. A lot of people don't even know where the thyroid is. <laughs> it sits right here, kind of around the collarbone area. And I was like, astounded because throughout my entire life, I'd been sick in the throat. So I grew up with strep throat tonsillitis. And when I was 17, I had an abscess in the throat that had to be surgically opened due to mononucleosis. And then at 28, the thyroid cancer. And I was like, huh, there might be something here <laughs> to this. So I really uh -huh. dug deeper into that aspect of myself. And I found a lot of things. So that really ignited it. And then from there, how did the journey continue? So you, you um, started using this in your everyday practice? So basically what I started using it is, is a tool to help heal along with a lot of other alternative modalities. So I, of course, Ayurvedic medicine had a huge impact on my life. And that's something I continue to practice today. 
um, practicing yoga, meditation, and the chakras, I like to look at it as an added layer of success towards your healing. And so let me just give you the example of what I looked into. So when I figured out that I had been ailing in the throat, and oftentimes what I found with clients is that everyone has one chakra that they're constantly working on their entire life. There's just one. There's one that where they're getting symptoms consistently. And so for me, this is the area of the fifth chakra is the area of speaking your truth, being able to speak what's in your heart. And I grew up in a really dysfunctional household, like a lot of people do. And I was, I had to be the good girl. I had to be the people pleaser. And so there was no room for me to speak my truth and express myself. I had to just be quiet and be the good one and make peace in the family And that worked throughout my childhood, but afterward, it just didn't work anymore. (laughs) So I I discovered that I had to heal a lot of relationships. I had to go back and heal some of the aspects of my past. And with the people in my life, you know, a lot of them were family members. And, Hmm. And so it was just working through that on a really deep level because I didn't want to get cancer again. And I figured if I didn't heal this aspect of who I was, that there was that possibility that I might have a reoccurrence of this specific type of cancer. So I decided to work with that. And so as a part of my Ayurvedic practice, that is as well something that I work on when I'm working with clients. And there's something, I see the symptoms and I see the reoccurring symptoms. And I said, hey, could you maybe check out this chakra and just look into it and see if that's something that you're open to healing? Because there's often, you know, a correlation between the symptoms and a specific area of the body. So when we're talking about dis-ease, right, disease, yes. where our body is out of ease, out of alignment, out of balance. So you're saying we can actually heal the disease through, through um, balancing the chakras? So, you know, for me personally, I did go through traditional medical treatments because I was so young. Um, the, the variants of cancer that I potentially had was a particularly aggressive form of cancer, And I had two small kids. And while I really wanted to work on alternative healing to try to heal myself of the cancer, um, my parents and my husband at the time were like, "Um, no, we want you to survive. (laughs) Mm. So what I did was I went through traditional therapy, like, you know, surgery, radioactive iodine therapy. But then through the healing process, I used the chakra healing, the Ayurvedic healing, the meditation, the yoga some therapy was incorporated into that. But I have seen people reverse diseases through these practices and diseases that are not 100%, like not stage four cancer. I am sure it happens. <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not going to advise you to try to reverse your stage four cancer through chakra healing. But it's the beginning stages of disease that I often see the reversal. So people that have super high blood pressure or the beginnings of heart disease or the beginnings of diabetes or fertility problems. So those are the types of things that I see clients reverse through these practices. How do we identify if our chakras are blocked? So there's a lot of different ways you could do that. So yourself, if you're doing it through self-healing, I like to do what I call a body scan with hands, laying of the hands. So a lot of energetic healing is through the hands, like Reiki, um, even acupuncture healing, it, you know, acupressure healing is through the hands. So what I like to do is say, scan your body through the chakras, just kind of, you know, close your eyes, put your hands on the crown chakra, just breathe into it and see what messages you receive. Just like, does it feel open? Does it feel closed? Does it feel well? Does it, do you get, you know, headaches around this area? Um, And then you can do like a minute through each of the chakras. So that's one way you can do it. Another way is to look at your reoccurring symptoms, as I mentioned before. So let me give you that example of a person who is consistently experiencing irritable bowel syndrome or acid reflux, which would indicate an imbalance in the solar plexus chakra or the third chakra. So look at those symptoms that have reoccurrences. Like I met a woman the other day who said that she had been suffering from migraines for 30 years. And that is indicative of the third eye or the sixth chakra, the Ajna chakra being blocked. So a lot of times you can look through your symptoms as well. 
And then, of course, you can go to an energetic healer, such as a Reiki master or even a massage therapist versed in the chakras that can also diagnose that for you. Great. Now, we talk in this camp, we talk about juicing for vibrant energy, but here we're talking about chakra healing for vibrant energy. So where's the tie in there? How can we (laughs) become more energetic and vibrant with with this practice? Well, you know what? I love juicing and I love especially green juicing. And here's what I preach and teach. I teach that put in good food, whole food into your body, get rid of the junk and everything. And I was, and when we're talking about, for example, the base chakra, which is the root chakra, and the most healing that comes out of the root chakra is stuff that comes from the earth. <laughs> so really focusing on a plant-based diet. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, (laughs) but, um, you know, I really preach to, you know, eat holistically, be friendly to the earth and in the way of organic fruits and vegetables and grains. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it all, everything that you put into your body, you are literally what you eat. And that's what Ayurveda says. Ayurveda teaches that, that you are what you eat. And what I like about juicing so much is that you juice fresh. You're never going to be eating three day old, you know, cooked foods. If you're juicing, it's going to be fresh. And Ayurveda teaches that the fresher the food, the more vitality and prana or vital life energy is going to be going into you. Oh, I love the way you tied that in. Did you plan that? No. <laughs> I love that. That just ties in beautifully to everything we're doing over here at Juice Guru. So thank you for that. Um, Because it is important what we're we're drinking, what we're eating, and what we're exposed to with media and social media and uh, the crazy world we're living in. So where do we find our peace and balance? So you say some practices are meditation, yoga. Are those some things that we can incorporate into our life to because it's all about holistic too, because you could juice Definitely. every day and, 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 and be stressed out in your relationship with your partner and develop disease. So it doesn't even Absolutely. matter. Absolutely, Yeah. And so, yeah, Ayurveda teaches that um, health is multi-layered and multifaceted. And I know people who work out every day at the gym and lift weights, but their emotional life is just in ruins <laughs> or um, they don't have a spiritual sense. They don't really have that, sense of really connecting to others spiritually or intuitively where they're all thinking in their head. And so they experience a lot of stress because they're all up here. (laughs) And so healing is multifaceted. And I also know people who, for example, binge drink on the weekends and then they do juicing during the week. (laughs) No, that's not good either. You need that balance. You need that balanced life. And in order to experience vitality, health and healing, and it's really, it's not about like living to be 150 years old. It's about living well every day. It's about having that energy and vitality every single day and not being sick because who wants to be sick on a daily basis? And that's really what it's about. It's about balancing your chakras. It's about balancing living a balanced life so that you can have fun, so you can play with your kids, so you can run around, so you can do good works and volunteer. And really that's, that's what it's about. It really does make a difference, doesn't it? I mean, from what we eat, because I don't know about you. I grew up on the standard American diet and was I completely did unconscious. I did too. <laughs> I grew up in the 70s. I mean, my diet consisted of bologna and boxed mac and cheese. <laughs> and Oh, yeah. Remember the hungry man frozen dinner? <laughs> yes, I used, to, I used to do the Salisbury steak one. Yeah. I mean, horrifi- horrifyingly crazy. enough. Yeah, it's crazy because our parents just didn't know any better. Well, I used but, to eat, I used to have a box of Fruit Loops every morning, lay on the table. Fruit Loops. Oh my goodness! I, yeah. I don't know what I don't, I'm not sure what what that was actually. But yeah. but it is nice. I, I bring it up because it is nice to be aware. More than that, I mean, the food supply is poison. We've got um, yeah. genetic engineering now. It's it's even worse than when we were kids. Of what what's that, what's out there in the uh, food chain? You know, and it's crazy. It's even fish. You know, a lot of people say, "Well, convert and just start be a pescatarian, just eat fish." And I was just at a Tony Robbins event last summer, and he has mercury poisoning. That's it, it's been three years in the making to try to get the mercury out of his body because he said. I will just eat fish, you know, no, you know, fish and vegetables. That's pretty much my diet. And his mercury levels were like 
maybe 10 times the amount of the normal mercury. And he didn't know what was going on. It was the doctor that found it. But yeah, so even fish, we can't even eat fish. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, plant-based diets are really the best and organic. So you're not getting all those pesticides and herbicides in your body. Mm. Uh, we'll have to talk later because I know you're coming out here to California. We talked before the show. And, <laughs> um, and it's funny because it just so happens that me and my family are looking for a yoga practitioner for family yoga. So I don't know if you're going to practice out here but I, yeah, I, think you wanna... I do I'm doing mostly like private lessons that's what I'm doing here so at other people's homes definitely <laughs> okay we'll, we'll, we'll be meeting up and we'll make you a nice uh, vegan meal when you're out here awesome but that's, that's the way we eat so what other th- practices can support uh, the the healthy chakras in everyday life yeah you, totally. you mentioned a few So one of the things that I hold near and dear to my heart is um, yoga breathing pranayama exercises because we don't know how to breathe as a society. Most people are just not cognizant of how to breathe. And even people that practice yoga, if they don't practice a style of yoga that incorporates yoga breathing in that practice, then they're not learning the yoga breathing. But it is so incredibly powerful. You can change your state completely with proper breathing. And there are certain breathing techniques that are very specific to each of the chakras to help open and align those chakras. And I do them in my yoga and pranayama videos for the chakras on YouTube. Um, But just to give you an example, a great one to alleviate migraines is the brahmari or the bee breath, where you're literally, I'll just demonstrate, and I know on radio this is not going to be good, but you're going to put your fingers, the middle two fingers over your eyes the index fingers go above the eyebrows, the pinkies rest on the cheeks, and you're going to close your ears. And you're going to inhale or exhale the sound hum or ohm. So it's going to sound like this. Hum. And with the vibration of that mm sound, it sounds like a bee, like a buzzing bee. And you're going to do that just emphasizing that mm sound as long as you can. And you're going to repeat it for about three to four minutes. And that helps to alleviate migraines. <laughs> so, Great. so those there are different types of breathing techniques for each of the chakras. And that's it's super powerful. You can use it in conjunction with your yoga practice, or you can use it separate from your yoga practice. Um, another thing is crystals and gems, which I talk about. And you can wear the crystals or gems that correspond to each of the chakras. For example, the one of the crystals and that correspond to the heart chakra is the rose quartz crystal. And so you can hold it. You can, if you're a woman, you could put it in your bra and carry it around with you. <laughs> That's actually when a, a yoga teacher told me to do that. She gave me a rose quartz crystal. She's like, here, put it in your bra. I was like, okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, crystals have healing energy in them. So you can use those. Um, there are dietary changes, of course, you can make for each of the chakras in specific with your Ayurvedic dosha. So if you're not familiar with Ayurveda, there are different mind body types in Ayurveda and they, they are called doshas and they correspond, um, well to the first five chakras. So there's one Ayurvedic dosha for each of the chakras and they sometimes repeat themselves throughout but you can, and then you can eat accordingly to that dosha for that specific chakra. We're with Michelle Fonda. She's the author of Chakra Healing for Vibrant Energy. Do you have a copy of that over there? You could hold it up for our viewers, for those oh two my goodness. here so hold they on. can take a look. Can I, can I get yeah, up? Go, go grab it. Oh, here. I'll, I'll, oh, I have okay. it right here on my desk. I'll put in a word about that. It's, um, there you go. <laughs> It's available on Amazon bookstores worldwide. Her website, again, michellefondenauthor.com. We'll have links to that over at juicegrewradio.com uh, when the show airs on iHeart. And I'll just go ahead and put it in the chat here for our friends and on Facebook too. So don't worry, we'll put, a, we'll put, um, we'll put up a post to that or a link. Uh, what, how else can we develop this practice? So, and would we want to include um, essential oils and things like that? You can most definitely include essential oils. I really love that. (laughs) Um, And I haven't written much about the essential oils for each of the chakras, but since Mm -hmm. there are specific essential oils for the Ayurvedic doshas, it would be similar. So let me give you an example. Are you familiar with Ayurveda at all, Steve? Vaguely. I read Spiritual Nutrition by Dr. Gabriel Cousins. He kind of tied it in there, but I haven't... I haven't visited it in a while, though. Okay, 
Okay, so yeah, you should take a look at um, the Wheel of Healing with Ayurveda because I really like dumb it down <laughs> for people that are way beginners in Ayurveda and they don't want to get too deep because it can go really, really deep and confusing. <laughs> a lot of people get way too confused when they start reading about Ayurveda. But um, the basics are, so the Ayurvedic dosha called Kapha, K-A-P-H-A, is comprised of the elements of earth and water. So if you look at the first chakra, the first chakra is our earth element. So that's our root chakra. It's the base of the spine, the first three vertebrae, the area of the perineum. If you're a man, it's the scrotum and the testicles. It's also, it also includes the bladder. So that is our sense of stability on the earth. It's, it's where we feel rooted, literally, to this earth. So it's having enough money. It's having a house, having enough food on the table. It's where you feel like you're planting roots, like in a nice home. <laughs> and so the Ayurvedic dosha kapha that corresponds is comprised of earth and water. So for example, to balance the Ayurvedic dosha kapha, you would burn something like a um, clove oil or frankincense. Those are two of the essential oils that would correspond to the earth element. And so if you smell frankincense or you smell clove, it smells very earthy, mm -hmm. right? So you think about, when you think about frankincense and you think about clove, you think about winter, <laughs> which really reminds you of that more like earthiness, home and hearth and, and building a fire. So it's, it's kind of like this warmth. And so those essential oils could also correspond to the chakras based on the Ayurvedic dosha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love frankincense. It's my favorite. I love that with myrrh, like the way they combine yeah. together. It's amazing. Um, so great ideas, great suggestions. And you also talk about um, tantra yoga and how that mm -hmm. plays into healing the chakras. Can you just touch on that a little? Yeah. So um, basically, I, I mentioned tantra yoga just because the chakras come from tantric philosophy. So there's a body of knowledge called the tantra text. And they come from India. They're ancient texts, anywhere between 2,000 to 5,000 years old. Just like Ayurveda, the Ayurvedic texts come from Vedanta or the Vedic texts, which they're, they're, they're similar in nature. They're complementary in nature. And so Tantra Yoga in the U.S., <laughs> we focus on Tantra Yoga as being like yoga for couples or sexual oriented yoga. And I just want to clarify that when someone sees Tantra in regards to the chakras, that it doesn't necessarily have to do with sex. Well, couples yoga is fantastic. And I love teaching couples yoga. It's so much fun because it's a great time for couples to just reunite and connect and be loving toward each other. And it's a great practice. Tantra was more about discipline. It's a more about austerity and discipline and things that we don't necessarily have in today's culture where people have a hard time sticking with a practice for a really long time. <laughs> they they kind of get the itch to try something new. And so the idea of Tantra was to be able to build up this Kundalini energy or this energy within the chakras to be able to have this disciplinary practice toward enlightenment. And really that's what it was. And I'm sure some people have taken Kundalini yoga and the awakening of the chakras is that Kundalini energy that's taught in the tantric texts as well. Very interesting. Okay. Well, again, we're going to have the website up at uh, jiskuradio.com. Before we close out here and you're in the audience, just remember if you're listening on iHeartRadio right now or anywhere else, iTunes or whatever, you can find us on Facebook at Juice Guru Community. Just do a search and you can get behind the scenes as being part of the Juice Guru Rewind at juicegururewind.com. And you can be in the green room with our other friends here because they get to ask some questions and interact and it's every week. So, um, Michelle, before we close out the uh, iHeartRadio portion of the show, though, any final words of advice or anything else that you want to touch on that we can share with our listeners that, uh, you know, to really help us to develop this practice? Yeah, so I would say, you know, most definitely, um, if there was one practice that you're not doing that I would recommend you do, it's meditation. And in the mm -hmm. book, I do guided meditations for each of the chakras. You can either read them into your phone and listen to them, or I do have it on my audiobook as well. And I know a lot of people aren't comfortable with meditation, but guided meditation is a great segue into a more silent or even mantra-based meditation. 
And that's also a great way to bring awareness to your chakras is through meditation. Is that, so how, for example, how often are you meditating every day? Like what should we strive for? Do you, and also do you think we need to be in a certain position or can meditation be done any position? Yeah. So I meditate twice a day, typically for 30 minutes each time. So that's what I was taught through the Chopra Center. And I practice a mantra based meditation. It's a silent meditation. Um, and I also love hearing guided meditations. And as for sitting, just sit comfortably. Try not to lie down because we associate lying down with sleep. And so just sit where you're comfortable. You, your back should be rather tall, but that's not necessary. Just make sure you're comfy. The idea is to meditate and not get too obsessive about it. <laughs> love it. Just start, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Start. She's Michelle Fondon again, and we've got her website up at JuiceGrowRadio.com. I'm Steve Prusak, and Michelle, thank you again for being here, of course. And thank you so much, Steve. We are opening for Q&A behind the scenes, but to our friends out in Radio Land, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Juice Guru Radio. Find out more about us at JuiceGuru.com. Until next time, get your juice on.